testing, testing, one, two, one, two, testing, 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 one, two, one, two. Hello everyone, my name is John Jr. and welcome to my YouTube channel, Reefing It Simple. The reason why I changed my channel from Emerald Coast Reef Head to Reefing It Simple is to follow what I believe in. I believe that keeping your reef tank is not difficult and it's not as hard as everyone makes it out to be. In fact, keeping a reef tank is easy, very easy. Um, what makes a reef tank difficult to keep is the individual. Depends on how much equipment you wanna put on your tank, depends on how much you wanna dose into your tank, and it also depends on whether you wanna keep easy corals or if you wanna keep difficult corals, if you wanna keep easy fish, or if you wanna keep fish that are difficult to keep. The choice is really up to you. You know, nobody's twisting your arm and nobody is forcing you how to keep a reef tank. And really, however you want to keep a reef tank is up to you. So let's get on to what we're talking about. In about a month from now will be my one year anniversary since I had set up my 125 gallon aquarium. This actually started out as a freshwater Lancet Aquarium, low tech. I took everything out of this tank that was freshwater related and I converted everything over to salt water. I read books, I watched the BRS TV videos, I did all of this stuff that helped me to understand how to get started in a saltwater aquarium. I talked to people at my LFS store, I talked to people online, I talked to people at BRS and also other companies that sell equipment, but also have knowledge in keeping a saltwater tank. I lost fish, I lost corals. You know, everyone's gonna make mistakes. Nobody is born a profession. Mistakes happen. We learn from them, which is why I always have my motto, Sempre Doctrina, which means always learn. The reason why I'm making this video here is because I am doing something different with my saltwater tank, my 125. This right here will be taken down and everything that's in this tank will be transferred over to my new 180 gallon acrylic aquarium. Now, something is gonna be different than I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be using a salt that, you mostly do not find this in a lot of your LFS stores. This salt here, I have been using for over 10 years. Not in keeping a reef tank, but I've been using this salt in my hydroponics. I farm hydroponic tomatoes, I grow lettuces, and I also grow collard greens, and I also grow other vegetables too. This right here is a bag of the C90 that I use. And the C90 here is also says it's ORMRI listed, um, yep, OMRI certified. So this is organic. It's all natural and it comes from the Sea of Cortez down in Baja, California. And how they actually harvest these salts is really interesting. Three times a year, or is it maybe four times a year, the tides become very high and it floods these estuaries. And when these estuaries flood, it fills into these estuaries and they close them off. It does not rain in this area. I mean, if they get any rain, it may be just maybe like an inch a year. So once they seal off these estuaries with this salt, well, actually with the seawater itself, the sun pretty much does all the work. It evaporates all the water out, and what is left behind is the salt with all of the minerals and elements in it on the periodic table, all 92, all contained in this salt. This salt is has no additives added to it, and it's not altered in any way. It's basically the salt that comes directly from the ocean, put in a bag and sent direct, directly to you. One thing about the ocean that is amazing and that I love about the ocean is that it contains every element on the periodic table. When it rains, where does all that fresh water go? It's eventually gonna to have to get to the ocean. So anytime you have fresh water flowing, it's gonna pick up minerals, elements, whatever it can take. And eventually, all of those minerals and elements, all 92 of them, 
it's eventually going to reach the ocean. Whether it be gold, whether it be um, platinum, whether it be strontium or boron or nitrogen, whatever. It's all eventually going to get to the ocean. And that's the thing about ocean water. It's constantly being replenished with elements and minerals and such from the land. No matter what it is, it's in ocean water. Now, how did I find out about C90? And I wanted to see how can I make nutrient dense fruits and vegetables with hydroponics. And that's when I stumbled upon Dr. Maynard Murray. And this is one of his books, Sea Energy Agriculture. This right here was written by this gentleman right here, Dr. Maynard Murray. He was actually a throat doctor and he wanted to understand what was it about in the seawater that a lot of these animals that live in the ocean, they were more disease resistant, they were more pest resistant, and you know, they live for a very, very long time. I mean, there are many animals that live in the ocean that can live over, over 500 years like the Greenland shark. I mean, those things can live, I believe, probably over 500 years. And we have corals that live in the ocean that they have discovered some corals are over 400 years old. Sea trout, they found, is actually larger than land-based, than, than freshwater-based trout. He used this sea salts and he used it to feed his animals. He used it to do hydroponic experiments, growing tomatoes, watermelons, cucumbers, and such. And they had bumper harvests, harvests that were bigger than anything that they had ever seen. Now, thanks to Dr. Menard Murray, you know, more people are becoming more aware of the usage of using, you know, minerals, sea minerals, and hydroponics in the garden. When I first started, we always wanted to try to keep things as pure as possible, buying uh, lab grade lab grade materials and salts, pharmaceutical grade, you know, of the purest quality. I would rather keep things more natural and give the fish and the corals what they've been living in for thousands of years. Now, just a disclaimer, I don't believe in evolution. I believe that we were created by God himself. So I'm just gonna tell you right now, I don't believe in evolution, so I'm not going to say anything about anything evolving or anything, you know, like that. I'm just going to say that one time, and that's it. For thousands of years, these corals and these fish lived in this water that pretty much has every element on the periodic table. I am converting my tank over to C90 um, C minerals, and and it's a risk that I'm willing to take. And also for those out there who say that, you know, I'll be introducing pathogens and diseases and such in my tank because, you know, of what comes out of the ocean. You see these rocks here? Those rocks came out of the Gulf of Mexico. That's right, they came out of the Gulf of Mexico. There is a company here that sells rocks that are taken out as dry, dead rock mined out of Florida, out of here, here in Florida, it's lime rock or whatever, they mine it, and they basically take it out, you know, maybe five miles or so out into the Gulf of Mexico or whatever, and there's an area that they have where they set this rock down into the, into the water, and they leave it there for years, probably in five years or so. Then after that, they come back, they harvest the rock with all the critters, all the hitchhikers and everything that's on that rock, they bring it back, then they box it up and they ship it to these LFS fish stores. And that's where I got some of my rock. So like this one here has got a little um, burn coral. Yeah, this little guy right here has got a little burn coral on it. That came out of the Gulf of Mexico. But if you look at my tank here, my tank's doing just fine. So that really shows that the natural bacteria you know, the natural critters that live out there, they all serve a purpose. And I'd rather have them in my tank. This stuff is not, you know, they don't filter this stuff. You know, they don't screen out particles, screen out sand or whatever, or anything like that. Of course, it's gonna make your water look kind of milky and cloudy and such, but you know what? After an hour, 
it's all clear. But one thing, the benefit of using the C90 is that I know that all the inhabitants in my tank, they're getting all 92 minerals and elements on the periodic table in perfect balance. I wanna give these animals basically what they always have had and lived in. Whatever salt you wanna use, use it. Whatever salt you're comfortable with, use it. Don't use something because I said that I'm using it in my tank. Oh. And follow me in my journey as I will film doing the water changes as I do them. I'll film them so that you can see me actually mixing the C90 and putting C90 into my reef tank. And we're gonna watch the corals, we're gonna watch the fish, see how they do. Do they do better or do they get worse? Does the coral start dying off? Do I start having algae blooms like crazy? Does the tank crash? Whatever happens, you'll see it. And that way we'll all know whether C90 works great in our reef tanks. I'm pretty sure that it's gonna work very well in our reef tank. I believe it will. As I believe the good Lord made the heavens and the earth, I believe that when he made these animals, he knew what they needed. Well, I wanna thank you all for watching my video. And I wanna say that I do appreciate your help and your support. Y'all well, have yourself a great day. Y'all take care of yourselves. I'm John Jr. And thank you for my, thank you for come visiting my reef channel, Reefing It Simple, where we like to do reef tanks simple. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.